that diesel is not supposed to leak down like that. What that means is that the check valve that is inside this filter and also the other one, they are leaking and therefore those check valves must be replaced. This is what the valve consists of. It's this little hollow aluminum ball and also that little gasket seat thing. And the ball actually sits below the gasket and floats up against it and seals. Uh, and that is actually what's supposed to prevent the filter from backflowing. Got it taken apart to here, got the bowls off. Um, there's kind of some, you know, grossness in the bottom of the bowls. Get some of this goodness out of here. Yeah, so that's some of the crud that's in the bottom of these bowls. These have not been cleaned out by us. So this is just leftover nasty gunk from the nastiness that was in the bottom of our fuel tanks. There's the old seat. And you might be able to see the ball sitting inside there. These filters are quite a ways above our fuel tank. Well, I say quite a ways. They're probably... They're probably... 18 inches above the top of the tank but man i don't even know like maybe four feet above the bottom of the tank so yeah we definitely need these little anti-backflow things working correctly look how much gunk is on on those things even i mean every, everything's just so dirty there's the seat Floats, it sits in there like that, with a little, with a little seat on top of it. Yep. Okay, well. Seconds have passed as you're watching this video, yet hours have passed on our end as we have made a trip to the hardware store and have completely reconfigured the plumbing to this dual filter setup. Observe. Essentially what I did was I ran these hoses on the outside of these filters rather than behind them. Um, while the prior installation did look nice and tidy, it actually caused lots of problems with being able to uh, reach the hardware necessary to service this unit. So I brought the hoses to the outside so that they're not blocking the necessarily har the hardware required to take all this stuff apart because I really don't like disturbing all these fittings. And the idea that you had to disturb all of these fittings to take it apart just to service the thing was kind of dumb. Tamby agrees. So now with the hoses and everything in place, now we're going to start reassembling the pieces here and installing the new anti-backflow uh, little aluminum floaty balls and seats. Nice. Very proper wording. It's great. Cut. So this is the little piece that houses the ball and the check ball seal. Now this is a place that I have heard that people often make mistakes. Uh, such as myself. I have made this mistake. I misunderstood the way these things worked at first. I thought this was a heavy ball that sank and created the seal, but it's not. It's a light, hollow aluminum ball that floats, which creates the seal. So this is how this little piece here, the centrifuge, I think it is called, is oriented. So what you do is, you know, clean this little guy out, be sure the ball is nice and clean, and drop the ball inside there. And then this piece here is the actual seal. And what's confusing about it is it has sort of a beveled part that would actually closely match the curve of the ball if it were faced down. However, that's not the way that uh, it is assembled. You actually assemble it with the cone part facing up. That is a mistake I made before when I uh, attempted to rebuild these things one other time off camera. Now that I know what I'm doing, we're filming it. All right, ball goes in. 
the seat goes in with the bevel facing up. Drops you right in there like that and push it down into place lightly. Is it focused? Yep. All right, then once you have the ball in and the seal in and it's nice and clean, you put this guy on top. I will make the remark right now that looking at this brand new seal, the edges do not look perfectly smooth, but it is brand new, so let's see what happens. All right, our, all these parts are clean, so you take this fella, screw it on here, screw it on those threads, just hand tighten, don't crank it down super hard. And that's it, those are in place. This, that part stays a little loose, that part stays a little loose. Now at this point it would be worth mentioning that I did twice try to buy a complete rebuild kit for these filters that included all brand new gaskets and seals and o-rings and all that stuff and twice the uh, supplier did not have them in stock and they failed to notify me until like it was too late basically so i'm going to attempt to reuse the existing seals i'm going to clean them up good i'm going to use just some regular engine oil and uh, treat it kind of like you would a uh, you know an oil filter just oil up the o-rings get everything nice and clean and oiled and put it back together and hopefully it will work for us mm -hmm. I'm just gonna set this up into place into this groove and see if it'll stay long enough for me to get the bottom half on like that now we're gonna put the put the bowl back together Get a little oil on my cap, take the bowl, take the bottom collar, drop the bowl in the bottom collar. Realize the sealing surface on the bowl may not be perfectly clean and wipe it. Then take just a touch of oil, put it around the rim of the bowl where it's going to contact the o-ring, put it in the collar, and install the collar. Ah, everything is so slippery. A lot of people misunderstand this little part right here, thinking it's some kind of bowl that catches the diesel in it, I guess. It's not. This is a shield to uh, basically, if there's a fire in the engine room, it protects the bowls and pr keeps them from melting at least a little bit longer. Buys a bit more time for uh, somebody to put, up a, put out a fire or the fire suppression system to put out the fire, but anyways. These are heat shields. There's two seals in there that I wish that I could change, but again, I just didn't get the, the parts in time. So we may have to may have to actually redo some of this. Well, we'll see how it goes. Let's oil these seals up just a touch. Okay. And then pop it on there. Just like so gently tighten with an adjustable wrench or something like that do not over tighten these things you can break these plastic bowls pretty easily just like that all right now i'm just putting in the little drain plugs that go right in the bottom let me screw in that large brass nut that's on the bottom a little torque on it like that go crazy. Gotta fill these back up with diesel. So here we go. Alright, so both of those are completely full to the brim. A little over, uh, oil on um, each of these seals here, which are practically new. I just replaced the filters in there. Like last time I was at the boat. And then just oil up all these little O-rings. Install them. Like so. And you clean up all of the diesel you spilt along the way. And then the last step is to install 
the lever. Nicely done. That's pretty much it. So these filters have been sitting now for a few hours now and they have not leaked down at least like they nothing like they normally have. I don't know if they possibly could have leaked down some behind this that we can't see but it seems to be a improvement so far so that is good. Yes yes. Now Tambi is about to get started with another little organizational project. What's happening out here, darling? Um, we have all these containers with nuts and bolts and screws and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So we need to organize it a little bit and we have a pile of stuff behind you that also needs to be organized. And that is these, so. In these containers, yep. Yeah. So yeah, all of this stuff is remnants of all of the projects that we've been working on for the last gosh eight nine ten months i don't even remember so about to get everything organized and sorted yep. Everything is nicely sorted. There's bronze screws and bolts, nuts and washers and bimini pins and no those are actually cotter pins and stuff. Uh, screws, more screws, bolts and machine screws, bimini fittings and stuff which now that I'm pointing this out we should have those bimini fittings and this bimini fittings and stuff box. Uh, electrical stuff, heat shrink and radio connectors battery washers that kind of thing and then just random boxes of stainless steel hardware max prop parts and wooden bungs oh and whatever that is <laughs> hey yeah. good job honey thank you, you good job honey you too <laughs> So here we are in the engine room. So if I pan around all the way here to the port side of the engine room, the outboard side, you can see this area over here. And there is this wooden, um, this piece of wood here that is on hinges. It folds out, hanging by this string there. And right here in this area is where we're going to put all of those spare parts. So they kind of sit on that shelf. And then this piece of string or piece of rope here is on a little pad eye. And it goes up to a cleat. So once all that stuff is loaded in, we can fold this up. And uh, it keeps everything from sliding out. Yeah. And this is also this little uh, piece of wood here that folds down. This is where I edit all of the videos. Yep, set up the computer right here in the engine room. And uh, yeah, that way I'm out of the ladies way, you know, they can concentrate and, um, you know, I'm just kidding, I don't, I don't actually edit videos in the engine room. You didn't really believe that, did you? Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. 